Hi, Marjorie. How are you? Good. How are Great. you? Great. Great to see you. And thanks so much for everyone for joining us. I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to join, but we've got a lot to discuss. So we're going to get right into it also. So Welcome everyone, I'm Amy Regan from Seesaw Art here in Manchester, New Hampshire, and we're so thrilled tonight to have Marjorie Williams here with us to discuss her work that is on view in Heatwave, um, which is on view until this Sunday, which is February 25th. <laughs> um, I'm just going to give a little intro about Marjorie. Uh, their work deals with the transformative powers of light and the beauty of human relationships in the magic and the mundane. They work in both analog and digital photographic processes to capture not only the look, but the feel of the world they see. Marjorie has a bachelor's in photography with a minor in museum studies from the University of Nevada in Reno. And they spent a year and a half living and working in Portland, Oregon, and spent the summer of 2022 traveling across the country photographing and they're currently living in Dover, New Hampshire. We're so glad to have you here in New Hampshire, Marjorie. Thank you. Excellent. So can you tell us about the installation that's right behind me? It's entitled Take and what inspired you to create this work? Yeah, um, I've always, or for several years now, I've really wanted to create an installation like this where it's a lot of small photos on a wall um and the goal is basically just a sense of like overwhelming feeling that uh, also has a warmth to it um the photographs were created over many years and they include all sorts of subjects although like there's definitely certain imagery that i gravitate towards um but one of my biggest inspirations is william eggleston mm -hmm. Um, a photographer that was most famous in the 60s and 70s and he had this idea of the democratic gaze or the democratic camera which was the idea that anything could be the subject of a photograph and it would be just as important as anything else um, and he actually published a 10 volume set of a thousand photos called the democratic forest so wow. i think it's pretty similar type of project yes um, and i so that was one thing that I was thinking about in terms of just allowing any subject matter to be a part of the work. Um, but I also really wanted people to be able to take the photographs off the wall. I, I was really excited about the idea of it being ephemeral and changing over time. And um, I also wanted the work to be accessible, which is why each print is just $10. Um, that's one of the most important things to me in the art world is making that more um, more of a thing, basically. I agree with that. I'm always thinking about art accessibility and making sure that if somebody loves something, maybe they can actually go home with it and not everything needs to be like $1,200. Yeah. <laughs> not saying it's not worth that, right? But at the same point, you know, these beautiful four by six prints, and you can see a couple behind me where there are gaps. So we sold those during the reception, which is a really fun thing to actually take them right off the wall, give them to the buyer in a nice envelope. And um, we sold a bunch of them, which was a really fun thing. And it's such a striking install that as soon as the viewer sees it, they instantly start picking out their favorite ones. So it was really lovely to share, like that could be in your collection, you know, whether it was a typical art buyer or somebody who's buying a piece of artwork for literally the first time. Um, so I really appreciate that. I think that that's such a smart idea. Definitely. And I love your thoughts about William Eggleston. Obviously, I think of his tricycle image, which like that really rings <laughs> as far as his ideas and um, and just just spreading that as well. I got to check out those 10 volumes. That's so exciting. <laughs> Berea, who is also in the exhibition Heatwave, said it was so fun to be able to go home with some photos because Berea purchased a couple of the photos as well. <laughs> Excellent. So in this installation, what are some of your favorite um, moments? I know it's hard to pick some, but I kind of wanted maybe two or three that were your favorite. Um, well, yeah, it definitely is hard to pick. I feel like I obviously gravitate towards the imagery of windows over and over. So some of my favorite ones are the ones that include windows and like reflections. Um, yeah, there's one 
right behind you that's it's like my partner is like framed by our window um like all of the sort of ge uh geometric uh aspects of windows make them really fun to compose photos with so yeah so those are some of my favorite ones in the show yeah. i think are a bunch that have windows and i was leaving my house the other day and i have the same sort of style door where it's like the panes in the white and i i left and i told my partner i was like we have marjorie williams window <laughs> <laughs> and i remember taking some photos of it years ago right when we moved in because there are such great reflections i live in the city and there's always a um we live on the corner so we have this like red blinking light that's constantly blinking which some days I think is fine. Other days I'm like, will the red light cool it, please? <laughs> <laughs> but it really casts a shadow. And with like our front door that has that same pain. And I love that because it's the idea of returning back to a subject that you see every day and they come out so differently. You know, maybe there's 20 images that include those windows or other windows in your home. And it's really fun to see how they change and the light changes. There's one window with a candle in it and a sunset and that's really or like a, a sun imagery that's really beautiful definitely i can see your love of that it's fun too like just to return to that imagery it doesn't feel mundane it feels inspired and that's like one of my favorite things um about this is that they are both universal imagery but also very personal at the same time so it's really really fun to like see the world through your eyes i love that <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Uh, Vix Pix 1960, hello, nice to meet you, says they wish they could have seen it in person. And I totally agree. Huge proponent of seeing artwork in person. But also, if you visit seesaw.gallery, all of the images are available for viewing right there, too. So it's not exactly the same as standing right in front of it, but at least you can see all, oh gosh, I think it's 176 images. <laughs> which was so fun. We had such a great time installing the work. Marjorie asked if she could install it herself. And I said, well, of course, like, let's figure it out. So we spent a really nice Saturday cutting up some museum wax and putting each one on the four corners and putting it on the wall. And that was such a great time. It's not often that an artist will have a piece that needs to be installed by them, but it had happened to me a couple of times within the past couple of months. And I was like, no, this is good. If you're not sure, then I have no idea. I could do a, you know, a salon hanging wall with a bunch of paintings, that's fine. But I can tell when it's really, really important. And I think what we created is really, really beautiful as well. Um, so much to see. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone, uh, sorry, if anyone has any questions, uh, pop them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. Let me see here. So what's next for you? What have you got going on as far as shows or ideas or what, what are you working on? Well, I'm I'm excited because I'm going to do a show at Rochester Museum of Art. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. That's going to be in the next month, right? Yes, yeah, um, so we have to talk, talk about yeah. that, you and I. <laughs> I owe you an email, of course. I also volunteer at the Rochester Museum of Fine Arts, and Marjorie approached me with this really gorgeous series of very beautiful um, environmental portraits of her and her partner. So please be on the lookout for that. I love those so much. I can't wait to see them. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I also have work back home. Um, I'm from Reno, Nevada, and um, the Reno Airport is having a show that is um, all of pictures from the music scene. And so for several years, I was photographing shows and um, I have a lot of pictures. So I was invited to uh, participate in that. Um, I'm also, of course, excited to uh, put a work in at the Bowie Gallery show next month. Um, they, I, I think probably a lot of people know about it, but um, if you make a work during February, then they'll hang it in March um, for their Art PM show. And I, ha I don't know exactly what I'm going to end up taking to them yet, but I'm excited about that. I love that so much. I'm so glad you're participating. It's so much fun for me to go there and it's like an artist quiz for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm often scouting too, like I met an artist that I ended up showing in November there in February. So it's like a great way to do it. And um, it's fun too because it does have that time element my partner was literally printing there's like 10 minutes before like midnight 
happened the 28th of February last year. So that has a really fun way to turn like this super dark month into something really, really fun. That's great. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Endless Swords asks, did you plan the composition of the photos on the wall or play with it as you win? Like how did the installation come to life? Yeah, we decided to just play with it as we went. And um, I think that turned out really, really good good um i originally was thinking i would do like a line of horizontal and then a line of vertical because obviously they won't all fit together perfectly since they're rectangular not square um but it ended up looking really good just doing it sort of um more more of like a puzzle piece basically um and so it's not like a perfect square or anything but I think um, it looks really good. So, um, and it was really fun to do. I love that <laughs> varied aspect of it because I think that like, for me, I would have been like, okay, only horizontal or vertical, but obviously because of composition, like how can you make, <laughs> how can you make those decisions? So they're kind of stacked in a way that's really, really interesting and really organic. And I feel like that speaks to the strength of the work. Um, I love when you're editing based on sort of that quality and not sort of sort of like arbitrary quality. Um, let's see. So Playful Meanderer says, tell us about some of the technical workarounds you have developed working in the outdoors. Well, well um, you know, I use my light meter and I usually go and um, under it a little bit because I find for me personally my light meter always no matter what camera it is makes things too bright for my personal tastes so they're always a little bit underexposed um, because I think you get like a better depth of color that way and then you can sort of play with it a little bit in the editing process or in the dark room um, so I feel like that that's my main thing is I sort of am sort um just going by feeling like I use the light meter as a reference but then I um also I'm thinking about what I'm seeing and thinking like well how do I think this is going to turn out based on like previous knowledge Does yeah that makes sense yeah I love that it's based on your experience you know and sort of like the feeling and how you want to not just document that but then also bring in how you want it to be uh, represented which definitely shows the mastery for sure. That's excellent. Thank you. Love that question. <laughs> so are these mostly um, digital images? Are they film images? They're black and white. Are they like, I guess, how technically are they created? These are all film images. Amazing. Um, and all of them have been scanned in. I, I get them developed and then I just scan them because that's the cheapest and most most like accessible way for me to do things right now. Yeah. Um, and then I, I edit them in um, Camera Raw, actually the Adobe software, but I don't do anything beyond what you could do in a dark room, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's not too many major edits in terms of that. I, I know that. some people had questions about the pink one that's yeah. right behind you. Yeah. Um, that one actually was just a scanning error. That's amazing. So, this one right yeah, there. that one right <laughs> there. So I decided to keep it because I also scanned it uh, with a crop that made it look more normal and natural. And I just thought the pink was so fun. And it's sort of cool that it was basically just a function of the analog process that made that come out that That's way. So Fun. I, I love it because I thought it was just like the best sunset that there ever was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then from meeting with you and chatting with you, I, I sort of got the idea that maybe you love like the pink aura, just how you're, you know, how you're sitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. Um, yeah, it, I, I feel the same way about editing. Um, I went to school for photography and you would think that I'm like a super Photoshop pro, but it's like, I can do a little curve and I can do a little crop and a resize, but it always sort of felt like extra cheating when you were doing something like that. So I sort of love how you've had those rules for yourself where it's like, here's what we have. I'm going to edit it just like I would in the dark room and why not. Um, it seems like there's more color images than there are black and white. Was that just of this series? Are you thinking in color and black and white? sort of all the time or trying to um, sort of pick what best serves the scene? 
Well, I think color is a really big part of my work and just like how I see the world. So I mostly shoot in color, but then just occasionally I decide I want to do a roll of black and white. I think it's black and white can be really good for if I know that I'm only going to be shooting in the daytime, um, like bright daylight with yeah. super contrasty, that can be really fun. Um, yeah, I think I decided to throw in the black and white images as part of the installation. I know it's sort of um, not something that most people would do in like a photographic installation, but I thought why not have a little bit of variety with that and um, just be playful with it, I guess. I love that so much. And, and, and some of the black and white images are my favorite. There's a really gorgeous one, including candles that I think is technically beautiful and compositionally beautiful. And I feel like it goes to further demonstrate just the idea of sort of capturing all the moments in your life. You know, not everything is like great golden light, you know? I think that the black and white is a really, really beautiful thing to include. That's great. Um, how, how can people stay in contact with you? Is it Instagram? Is it an email list? Is it your website? What's your What's the best way to stay connected? Yeah, I definitely update Instagram a lot. It's memory dot loop, um, and then I also update my website a lot, which is marjoriewilliams dot art. So those are the two best ways to keep up with my work. I think. Excellent. And your website is amazing. It's so much fun to scroll through. It's basically like having this, you know, as a, a digital version of all these great images. And I'm sure you're adding to it as you keep shooting. Do you shoot all the time? Are you shooting sort of constantly? Is it something that you're kind of always looking for? Or what's that process look like? I carry my cameras with me pretty much all the time. But I think I really go in like fits and starts. Like sometimes I'm, I do a Full, full roll in like a week or less than a week and sometimes that it's in there for like a month or over a month so it really depends on um like what i'm doing or like if i'm feeling inspired you know if i'm just like going to work every day and not really yeah. doing anything outside of that then like i'm probably not shooting as much but i think i shoot a lot more during the summer yeah. um but it's always something that's in the back of my head for sure Definitely. I know it's, I think, I think it seems so like funny to have this like beautiful summer exhibition in the middle of February. That was sort of like my underlying theme was I wanted some color and I wanted some happiness in this, in this kind of like typically snowy sort of month. And I feel the same exact way too. I kind of feel like I go into a little hibernation and then as soon as you start traveling or going to the beach or sort of, especially with the, um, the cross country trip that you took, that must've been amazing. It's so much fun to sort of like tag along and, and see it through your eye in this. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah yes 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 sorry I didn't oh you're you off there. good just yeah i mean a lot of the work is from that trip um and i i could have even included more probably that's the kind of thing that just brings you so much inspiration you know seeing new places and experiencing new things yeah because you're you mean when you're traveling like that it's con you know, and that you're dealing with whatever's happening. And then also just sort of, I don't know, I work at home in an office, which can get pretty mundane, you know, and, and, and traveling like that for a couple months must be so great. I have to do that. <laughs> um, let's see here. So it's really tough to be an artist. This is like my favorite thing to ask artists is how do you make sure that you're coming back and you're staying inspired, you know, and it's a, it's a lifelong thing. Maybe you have off years or something like that. But what keeps you coming back to create, uh, to continue creating? Um, yeah, I think that's definitely been something that I've thought about a lot in the past few years. Um, you know, I finished my degree in photography and then I had to fit in work with, or making new work with, you know, having a job and uh, spending time with friends and loved ones. Um, and I think the past few years have definitely been a lesson in um, like having di the discipline to do that. Um, I, I, th I think it's part of it is really just creating the habit. Um, and I think with my work, I just sort of can't help myself. Like if I'm seeing something that I want to photograph, I feel like I need to do it or I'll, I'll just 
I don't know. It, it's, you know, sometimes you do have to let the moments go, but it can be hard to do that. And I, it's, it's just something that's second nature to me. Um, especially since I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. So that's, amazing. that's like, I mean, I'm, that's like 13 years almost, um, that I've been making photographs. So yeah, I think it'll always be part of my life <laughs> in some way, even if it's not my job. Yeah, like you just see it and it sort of comes out of you and you want to capture that for sure. And I love sort of either it's a document or a piece of art or something like that. I think I love that idea that it's going to come out of you no matter what. That's excellent. That's great advice too. Definitely. Well, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. It's been so much fun to dive in and chat with you, Marjorie. We really appreciate it. Um, there is just about, there's almost less than a week <laughs> left to view the exhibition. So anyone can visit uh, Seesaw Gallery to check out all the work here and then check out seesaw.gallery slash visit for our open hours. And um, you can also book an appointment. I opened up some extra hours this weekend for anybody who wants to come in. I happen to not be too busy this weekend, so come on down and see it. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Marjorie. It's been really, really great to chat with you and I love your work so much. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. It's really exciting. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>